You know my daughter, Ava? Just doing little pleasantries, oh, saying hi. Uh, Nick, I like that he said he watched our replay. Yeah, that's Turn the thing. That's, that's, that, that's all the Kyle right wanted there, to hear. Man. That's good. Nick, Nick and I grew up together, went to school together. His son and my daughter go to school together. So that's he's, how it he's goes He's an Arvin Bear? No, no, Garces Ram. Oh, Garces Ram, not an Arvin Bear, man. You got me excited there. Well, love love hey, the Bear Mountain right hey, out there. Look, look, look. Most beautiful scenic football field we in don't all just, of the land. We just don't throw out bears just like that. So nice little basketball game here shaping up. Just finished the girls game. Special hello to BHS legend, Roadrunner legend, Bo Redstone listening in tonight. Great chance to see Bo last night at the North High celebration. He's got a lot of ties to a lot of the coaches uh, that were involved in that lot of players. So Wolfpack starting five being introduced and Nick Edwards, Rohan Birch. You look at Rohan Birch, man, he's really grown up since last year. Just a sophomore last year, I believe, and he's a junior this year. And, and I can just definitely tell that he's definitely grown up. Be a nice guard for them. They got Ziegler back too as well that make the Ridgeview Wolfpack even tougher, but I'll tell you this, the big storyline of this game is what is Ridgeview going to be this year yeah. after losing two grown men that they had on their team <laughs> last year, Justin McCall and Jordan Roberts. And, and I got to say, you, you talk about the stars aligning for the Kernai Network, our first basketball season, there's Jordan Roberts down there shaking hands with people, but That's man, McCall. our, our first, I mean, Justin McCall, I mean, our first season, we are able to witness some special moments with Justin McCall and Jordan Roberts, so. Well, Kyle, let's get going. Before we start, Julian, your final thoughts here, Julian Wilson. My final thought is. Before tip-off here. My final thought before tip-off, let's go. <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> Thank you, Julian. Julian Wilson tonight on camera, has the headset. He's got some things to say. We want to hear it. So the ball goes up, and we're underway. Ridgeview will start it off. Birch has it on the far side. Dominant southpaw going hard to the hole. Ball stripped away by the drillers. And here comes BHS. Roland Banks stops, pulls up the dribble. Now has to hand the ball over to McGee. McGee down low, a nice pass, entrance pass down low. Doesn't go though. Reeves can't make it. Ball comes up and laid up and in by Ackerman. So Ackerman able to put it in. BHS. Trouble here. Nice tip. From Birch, there's the first shot that goes up, and there's a foul. Whistles blow here. First foul of the evening is going to be on Ackerman. So Ackerman has first bucket and first foul of the evening. Nice pass to get things started here. Hard shot off the glass, doesn't go, and it's going to be BHS basketball. Once again, everybody, welcome to KernightNetwork.com. Live exclusive coverage of high school sports here in the current high school district. We are at Ridgeview tonight. The Wolfpack welcoming in who else? The Bakersfield Drillers, number three in the section. Ridgeview number eight. Bakakis will look for Costa to do some things. Roland Banks has the ball stolen. Nice cross-court pass into the corner. Doesn't get it to go, though. The shot put up by Ziegler. Left-hander put up out there by Ackerman. Doesn't go. Battle for it. Banks has it. Banks dribbles hard to the nail. And they're going to say that's a foul down low. And that's going to be on Harold Hartage, his first foul of the evening. Different pace right here. A lot of athleticism. Number 15, BHS. He looks grown in there. Big, big, solid body for him. Oh, great pass down low underneath the glass. Can he make it count? He does, and that is going to be a foul. Probably going to be a shooting foul, but imagine he was on his way up. And that foul is going to be on Sean Jim and Tara. And Reeves will go to the line. Comes up short on the first of two. Again, welcome in everybody. Vance Palm alongside Kyle Wiley, Julian Wilson on camera and commentating tonight. 
I asked Julian for his final thoughts before tip-off. Simple. Let's go. He wants to see some great action just like we all do. Two missed free throws. And now it's going to be Ziegler. He's in trouble. Oh, ball is deflected. He gets it back. And ball's in the corner. The southpaw pulls, and he gets it. Wow. Birch had a great season last year trying to with all those stars around him. Now he's got to step up into his own and be a key player for the Wolfpack. 3-2, to two, Ridgeview up by one after Birch drops in the big three from the corner. And they get the ball in the hands of Banks. Banks has it stolen. That's the second time Banks has had it stripped. And here comes fast, fast pace going to the hole, but he blows the layup, and Ziegler can't make it. Rebound, Bakakis. Ryan McGee, the speedy Ryan McGee, can't make the layup. And Birch has the ball deflected. A lot of one-handed passes out there. Ziegler has it. Ziegler looks in the corner for a second, thought he would pull the trigger, floats it down low, finally gets the ball down low, and a good give and go from Jim and Tara. Oh, and stripped out of the hands of everybody, Harold Hartage. Great heads up play. He missed the initial shot, but he was able to strip it and put it up for the easy putback. And a steal. And here comes what might be the first dunk. Oh, no, he just lays it in. I thought that was going to be flushed all the way down. Harold Hardin says no, 7-2. And the Wolfpack right now is saying, hey, this might be the number three team in here, but we want him. Ryan McGee has the ball blocked up front. And will it be Ridgeview ball? It will. Jim and Tara is going to hand it over to Ziegler. Ziegler takes a look. He's being guarded out there by Esquivel. Esquivel on Ziegler. Ziegler comes up, puts it up. Oh, man, thought it was going to go. Fouled on the way. That foul is going to be on Gabriel Esquivel. He's a senior for Coach Burt. BP, you hit it right on the head. The Ridgeview Wolfpack, they're, they're being the aggressors right now, and they're going right at this number three team in the Valley. Got to see how BHS responds. Ziegler makes it. No shortage of southpaws tonight on the floor. At least three lefties in at one time, and I believe we might have one more for Ridgeview that we haven't seen yet. <coughs> hey, nothing wrong with the lefties. Are you a southpaw? I am a southpaw. Oh, Steve, Katie's a southpaw, you're a southpaw? Steve Young, favorite all-time QB. Chris Mullen, gotta love it. Nine to two right now, Wolfpack up seven. David Rivecho's in the ball game for the Drillers, so Coach Burke going to the bench early. Nice rebound by Jamal Chase. He got up there. Has good length, good size to him. Ziegler can't get past. Oh, and it goes off his foot. A steal by Taj Wright. And the ultra-talented multi-sport athlete has the ball roll off his feet. Everybody's going to get a chance to see Wait. arguably one of the best football players in the section playing some hoop now. Dynamic plate. Playmaker on the courts and on the field. Hardage loses the handle and he'll be called for the foul. Oh no, they just basically called it out of bounds. No foul on Hardage. I thought he'd get called for the reach. Nine to two in the early goings here. Four and a half left in this first quarter. Drillers only have one bucket so far and that was by Ackerman who had a two footer to put back in. Ravecho in trouble, in trouble, being trapped, in trouble. Has the ball stolen again. And the ball's going to be tossed. Oh, will it be saved? It is. Oh, Ziegler thought he had a great save. He does not. So sloppy play on both sides of the floor right now. Yeah, Rowan Birch needs to take care of that ball, especially in the transition. He had time where he could hold on to it and deliver a good pass. But that 100 pass that drives you crazy, VP, he's got to learn to capture it with both hands. Another strip. Birch to Ziegler. Ziegler might go all the way, and he does, but that ball is rejected. Absolutely thrown away by Roland Banks, and a foul on the other end. Oh, wow, block at, party. At KHSD Athletics is where you're going to want to go to see all of these replays on our Twitter feed. Wow. Roland Banks a, with the block party. That was huge. The junior Roland Banks up high and big. And now at the line, though, on the other end is Taj Wright. Taj Wright gets the first to drop. Woo! 
Put that in your memory banks. Roland Banks. Aha, see what I did there? Didn't mean to, but Roland Banks can get up. Taj misses the second. And a lot of these players, I call them football, so if I go with first names, please forgive me. How about this? A steal by Esquivel. Esquivel's got to pull it back. Taj sees it. No, that's Banks. Up and in. Oh, what a nice move by Roland Banks. The right-hander. And some sloppy play, and it looks like Banks is going to get it again, and that's going to be a foul. Will it be intentional? And Coach Burt wants intentional. Birch will pick up his first foul, and the reason he wants an intentional is because he tripped him. And Coach Martin wants a 30-second timeout. So here's the start to the game that we, we knew we were going to get. It's 9-6, Ridgeview up over BHS here on KernHighNetwork.com. And we're going to see, I think, this frenetic, hectic, crazy pace all night. But I think it'll get refined. It'll get, you know, kind of cleaned up and shaved up a little bit here to look more like uh, the model structure of what these coaches can expect by the second or third quarter. Harold Hardage, Ziegler. Rohan Birch, all of these guys that are seasoned, Valley Championship experience, weren't the focal points last year. This year they are the focal points. Guys like Jamal Chase who are long and lengthy, how will they respond to the Wolfpack? But I'm telling you, BHS is about 10, 12 deep right now, and they're just going to keep reloading and reloading. We haven't even seen staff yet come off the bench or do anything like that. So curious to see what that is. Escabel. Nice movement with the ball. That may be a walk, and I think the Ridgeview crowd wants to travel. Everybody in the house wants to travel. Uh, sorry, Anthony Dominguez. Dominguez came in, pump fake. I thought he slid across the floor. No call on the walk. Ridgeview crowd, everybody thinking it was a travel. They don't get it. VP last year, number 11, was Esquivel for the drillers. So this year, it's Ant Anthony Dominguez. Yeah. Xavier Esquivel, remember the X Factor. He was just lining it up from outside. But similar, similar game. Costa Bacacus, big, strong, tall sophomore comes in. And Dominguez. Makes the free throw. Great defense by Bacacus. Bacacus has to roll it down, lost his foot. Lost his footing there, but great effort, great pressure. That half-court pressure put on by Coach Burt. Harold Hardage back in. Nick Edwards, a senior for the Wolfpack, is in. Jamal Chase in. And great work by the Drillers. They almost get a steal. Birch right down the middle of the floor. Birch says, if you want to let me go, I'll go. And he does. Rohan Birch lays it in with the right hand. Roland Banks. Banks stops, pulls up. Banks at the top. Dominant left-handed player. Has Bakakis standing in the left corner if he needs him. But Banks pulls the trigger. Does not go. And right where Bakakis was standing... Great pass. Oh, and a blown layup. And that was a perfect pass. Taj Wright put it right in the hands of Dominguez. And he couldn't make it go. And that ball goes out of bounds. But that was a beautiful dime right on the money. As we're going to see Ackerman come back in. And Escabel came back in for the Drillers. 11-6 right now. Ridgeview still up five. Banks comes in, thinks he'll get the call. No, they say jump ball. It'll be a possession arrow. No foul. And it remains VHS basketball. 2.13 remain here in the first quarter. The Cacus open in the corner if they can get the screen set up. Oh, now they figured out he was all alone by himself over there. Ziegler saying, hey, I've got number 23. Maybe. 11-6, early goings here in the first quarter. 2.13 remain. I'm Vance Palm, Kyle Wiley, Julian Wilson. Great to have you with us here. 
the give back. Banks has it. He comes in hard, lays it up and in. Man, oh, man, what a beautiful Silky play. smooth lefty layup right there. Plus, he has the hand yeah. time to go with it. Full court press, man to man getting put on. That's a bad pass. A great heady play there by Ackerman. And the ball batted away, and it's going to be a Ridgeview ball, but a quick look back down low by Ackerman. Sure like that game. Full court pressure getting put on by the drillers. Ziegler says, I want all of it. A little bit of a cross up, crowd going crazy. Shot goes up and it's missed out there by Hartage and it will be BHS basketball. A quick crossover by Lavelle Ziegler. Had the Wolfpack crowd standing up as the Dean of Local Sports Great Crew walks in. Here's a low pass down to the block. Nice feed by Bakakis. Rejection, but it's still Driller basketball. Bakakis in the corner, thought about it for a second, pulls up, throws it back out. Banks, top of the key. Escaval has it. Now it's Banks again. Escaval. A lot of time on the shot clock. Escaval again tries to go in hard. He loses it. They're going to call a walk, so turnover Drillers. 11-8. 1.22 to go here in the first quarter. Somewhat of a sloppy start, but you can hear the crowd. They're ready to explode. This crowd is ready to go bonkers. A lot of athleticism on both sides of the floor. Jamal Chase with the big block. You got Banks with the dribble drive and the lefty swoop. I mean, we're seeing some of the best athletes in town playing tonight. Ziegler pulls it back out. He's a senior, wears number 13. Stops, throws that one-hander all the way across court. Pulls it back out. 15 on the shot clock. This is the most patient of any set we've seen yet tonight in either game. <laughs> There's a long three that's pulled. Is it up? It is. It does not go, though. Taken by Abney Desai. Doesn't get it to go. And here comes Escaval. Top of the key. Comes around the corner. And that could be, ooh, it might have been very close to being offense if he was using that left arm. But the foul is going to be on Abneet Desai. 11-8. And Coach Burt. I like Jamal Chase coming on, coming down, sitting down. But he had a good game. Presence inside. Caleb Reeves comes in for the drillers. And finally, the foul. Oh, they're going to yeah. call it traveling. It looked like he drugged that foot. Ooh, a lot yeah. of contact by Sean Gimentera before, but yeah. uh, no call, no foul call. Thought it was pretty physical down there underneath the hole. 11-8, Ziegler right down here below us. Ziegler so talented. Gimentel comes down, throws it down low, and it is missed. Point blank range by Edwards. Nick Edwards. Edwards saves it, though. Gimentel comes in, lays it up off the glass. Beautiful play. Jim and Tara. He, he had absolutely no one in front of him right there. At but. the end of the first quarter, 13-8. Ridgeview up five over BHS here on Kernheinetwork.com. Back right after this. Welcome back, everybody. 13-8. What about all of our administrative powerhouses that make sure we're, we're on everybody's 
radar. Yeah, Dr. Brian Schaefer really has given us the go-ahead with the Kern High Network out of the Office of School Support Services. Dr. Brenda Lewis, who oversees the instruction division in the Kern High School District, innovative programs and uh, innovative programs and different things that go on in the district. Dr. Dean McGee, but Stan Green had a vision of being a live stream force. Um, he's the director of school support services, and it all started with you and Kevin Willie and Stan Green started as three. Now we have multiple crews going out there, multiple production, a lot of things going on there. Huge followings on Twitter. I mean, what about I, the it, other night we had a game, um, 3,000 viewers? A, a Shafter game. We had over 3,100 viewers watching a Shafter playoff football game, the only game in town watching Alex Aguilar. Too bad they couldn't, you know, get it. But nonetheless, it was a very, very, very proud moment in the Kern Eye Network. This has kind of been our baby, you know what I mean, over the last year. And I've really tried to commit, you know, how we market this, how we brand this, how we do all that. Stan Green and... You know, I think of all the people, Javier Valdez and Miguel Garcia and Julian Wilson and Kevin Willie and all those behind the scene guys that really make this go do what it needs to do. Thank you. Appreciate that, Kyle. Yeah. And everything you do is important. Uh, Julian, your thoughts on, on, you know, having your background here in this community and, and been around sports for so many years here, your thoughts on on the importance of what we're doing here at the Kern High Network. And this isn't self-serving. We brought you in this year, so I'd like to hear yes. your thoughts on this. Well, you know what? I think one of the biggest things, and I mentioned it to Kyle, you know, it's what we do for the kids. Uh, with these young people who come out here, they, they practice, they study, and they come out here and they compete. And there's no other uh, group of people in Kern County that I could think of that could, deserves this exposure right. than these young people. We need to know if you're going to support them, you need to know what they're doing. And this provides a perfect platform. And, you know, Kyle, we'll do some big games. You know, we'll do the yeah. DHS Liberties of the world. But we'll also cover some other games that aren't so uh, high profile. And those kids get to go home and say, hey, get, me, get, get on the phone, get on the computer, get it up there. Let's check it out. Hey, two of our top broadcasts in football. One was Arvin, your Arvin Bears versus no. Miramonte. Well, of course. And then Kern Valley Rosamond. Kern Valley still part of the Kern High School District. We had over 1,000 viewers in that game alone, I mean, watching that. So Fantastic. very good stuff. Fantastic. So. Start of the second quarter. And the long, lanky number 33, Ronald Stapp, is in for the drillers. And he's instantly putting the pressure on up top. And it could be, should be, oh, they're going to say it's a blocking foul. And that is going to be a foul on Caleb Reeves. So Ronnie Stapp in the ball game. Ronnie Stapp, just a mismatch nightmare. Cog of that Division I Valley Championship runner-up team for BHS last year. So... Very emotional, very high-energy player is Ronnie Stapp. How about this matchup right there? Oh, what a beautiful pass down low. Just a fantastic job by Rohan Birch. And Edwards, the recipient of that beautiful pass. And Ridgeview is up. Bacacus from the corner doesn't get it to go. But we're going to have a foul, and that's going to be Stapp. So Ronnie gets in the game and picks up his first foul pretty quickly. 15 to eight, Ridgeview up here to start the second quarter. Full court pressure. Bacacus will get called for the foul here, trying to hang on to Ziegler. So Costa picks up his first foul of the evening. Ziegler working on Bacacus. From the corner, does not look good and is not good. And it is a holding foul, and this is going to be on Ron Stapp. Wow. Jim and Tara and him were mixing it up down underneath, and they're both physical energy guys that go in there. Jim and Tara came off the bench last year, brought a lot of energy to the Wolfpack as they won the Division II Valley Championship. So very curious at that matchup. It's uh, very intense, very physical players right there. So Stapp has been in for less than a minute to start the second quarter and has already picked up two fouls. How about that long bomb from Ziegler doesn't go? Outlet to Stapp. Stapp comes right across the middle, throws down. That ball is deflected. And Jim and Tara with the steal. Jim and Tara has that ball batted away. Now Stapp looks up court. And he finds Dominguez. Dominguez for three. 
doesn't go short. Big offensive rebound down low, and it is blocked. Caleb Reeves working hard under the hole. Coaching staff for Ridgeview up. Head coach Mike Martin. Good hands by Edwards right there to deflect the ball out of bounds, but Revis with a nice offensive rebound. Staff with his first attempt. Oh, rattles in and out. That sure looked good. Banks comes up, lays it off the rim, doesn't get it to go. Staff in there battling for it. Ball comes in the corner. Will he pull? No, but he will. Dominguez. Ah, can't get it to go. So in a gym that's freezing cold, and whoever this foul be on, it's going to be on Dominguez. So he did not give Ziegler some room, and he paid the price. Took an elbow right to the schnoz. Ouch. Ziegler was going full stride, turned around, elbow to the nose, and the foul. Oh, wow. Dominguez, scrappy little player. I think he's just getting warmed up right now. I think he's going to start to get in there and get some shots. BHS, seven fouls already, and Ziegler will be on the foul line. Southpaw pulls the first, doesn't get it to go, but a big, strong rebound out there by Edwards, pulls it back out. So they want to give Stapp into foul trouble early, so they're trying to get it down there to him. But that's Jamal Chase, and so now he pulls Stapp out, a high pick, and a give and go, and a beautiful give and go. Absolutely. And Jamal Chase fouled on the play. So with Stapp having two fouls, Coach Mike Martin of Ridgeview and his staff saying, look, let's get him the third one as fast as we can. 15-8, Ridgeview up seven. You can tell there's a little conversation between Stapp and the official right now about maybe some physicality and stuff that was underneath. He's trying to play good defense, love his energy, love his passion. The junior, Jamal Chase, misses the first. One thing we've noticed tonight in the girls and the boys game that the early season free throw percentage very low. Second one, rattles in and out. Big rebound out there by Taj Wright. Here comes Banks to the corner. Dominguez stops, pulls up. Taj in low, comes up, has that ball rejected. Physical play now. And Ziegler with a great move and puts it up, down on a pass. And Hartridge misses from two feet. And here comes Dominguez. Driller stop, pump fake. Dominguez goes up, can't get it to go. Sloppy play. Nobody can make a bucket. Oh, what a great pass. Oh, he threaded the needle so nice. Rohan Birch, the junior, wears number one, has the white headband on. He is something special. Yeah, he had a big-time player last year coming off the bench for the Wolfpack. And, you know, I'm going to be saying this all night. He's kind of grown up and matured physically, and it looks like his understanding of Mike Martin's system as well. That gets blocked, though. Pulled the trigger on that, and here comes a quick pass stolen by Ziegler. Ziegler. Boy, Ridgeview's got a nice squad. Up 7, 15, 8. Ziegler being hassled out there by Taj. Wright's going to pick up that foul. So with 5.16 to go here in the first half, a low-scoring affair, 23 points total, 15 to 8. As we see Birch come out, Ridgeview up 7, and at the line is Lavelle Ziegler. Gets it to go. Both of these teams, BHS, Ridgeview, their early season schedule is loaded. I mean, talking about game one, you're going against a D1 Valley Championship caliber team and a D2 Valley Championship caliber team. Now Ridgeview's in D1, so two D1 powerhouses starting off game one. Shows you the type of schedule they want to have going into the playoffs. The Cacus back in. He'll work the middle against this zone that Coach Martin and the Wolfpack has put together. 2-1-2. Two, two. It's a stretch zone. They come out as far as they can. Bakakis at the elbow. Now they go back. They throw it back across to Esquivel. Esquivel can't get it to go. Bakakis, big work down low. Oh, and it rolls in and out. Big rebound. Couldn't get it to go. Ziegler has the ball batted, and it is still going to be in the hands. Oh, a loose ball foul called against Roland Banks and the coaching staff from the Drillers flummox as to why that was a foul with the ball loose and out in the flatlands. A very nice officiating crew here for this varsity boys game. 
the varsity girls game. Those officials put in a lot of work. And with the scoreboard clock not working tonight, as we talked about in the first game, the natural tendency and the muscle memory is to always be looking at that clicking, ticking talk, but it's not happening. At the line, Jim and Tara misses on the front end of two in the double bonus right now. So every time the driller is foul, Ridgeview is going to get two shots. 440 to go here in this first half. Makes the second. And it is a 16 to 8 ball game. Ackerman back out to Banks. Banks looks at it, wants it three, can't get it. Bakakis, big rebound, comes up, puts it up and battles in. No, out. Ackerman gets it to drop. So Samuel Ackerman. And the drillers have 10, 17 to 10. Looks like Ziegler's going to be doing the primary ball handling. Remember last year, you had Silent Q, Quentin, Crony was the do everything point guard for the Ridgeview Wolfpack, and that is the void that Ziegler's going to have right now. Roland Banks guarding Ziegler, 12 on the shot clock, and loose ball, and it's stolen, but Ziegler gets it back, and he stops and takes the 12 footer, doesn't get that to go. Banks looking down court, wants somebody. Banks takes a look, throws it up, and it is Ackerman down low. Ackerman comes up, puts it up, and does not get it to go. A battle for the basketball, and it'll be Ridgeview ball, and with 3.41 to go in the half, 17 to 10, low scoring affair tonight. It's cold in the gym. Literally, figuratively speaking for the shooters, the only person to really light it up so far has been Caldwell, yeah. our Tony's Pizza <laughs> player of the game for the BHS Driller Girls. She had 23, by the way, 23 officially. As we see Gementera on the line. And he gets that to go. Sean Gementera, senior. And Rohan Birch will come back in. Ziegler's finally going to get a rest. I'll tell you this, Rohan Birch has had a nice game. You talk about Ziegler getting rest, but Birch has been a catalyst early on. Jim and Tara makes another. Ackerman in trouble, bad pass. And Birch wants to go to the hole. He comes in and again batted away by Roland Banks. Now Banks wants to go to the hole, and he comes up and has his shot swatted. Jim and Tara over to Birch. Now Birch with a one-handed pass comes down low, and it is laid up and in by Hartridge. So some highlight reel stuff from Banks. But the Drillers still needing some points. Twenty-one twelve with... Three minutes to go here in this first half. A double dribble call on Rohan Birch. So into the ballgame now. Anthony Dominguez will come in. And now Coach Martin's going to go to the bench and bring in Pierre Morrison. So Pierre Morrison, the junior. We saw Pierre Morrison playing football, and he was a yeah, we did. grown man up front. One thing you got to talk about, I mean, pops out. This athleticism of Banks, even though he has the ill-advised pass right there, is through the roof. Monster blocks for a guy that's playing that point guard position. Roland Banks. Wiping the glass with a couple of would-be lay-ins. Ziegler pulls for three. Rattles, doesn't go. Offensive rebound and the putback out there by Jamal Chase. Bakakis for three. A little long. I think the team that establishes the three-point line, we haven't seen a whole lot of them, is going to win this game. Someone's got to start finding that zone if they have it. That could be one. No, comes up short again. Battle for it down low. Doesn't happen. Rohan Birch will take it, throws it to the corner. Ziegler back here. Jim and Tara can't get that to go. It's going to be Bakakis with the rebound, throws it off. Escavel has it. Escavel pulls up right in front of the opposing coach, Mike Martin. Oh, a gamble by Ziegler. Doesn't happen. Banks is foul. Will it count? And it does. So Roland Banks. Pick up 
Pierre Morrison's got to slide his feet, get out front of there. He, like, leaned with his upper body and tried to take the charge on there. But, man, this athleticism of Banks is good. One fifty-nine remains in this first half, 23-12. to Low-scoring affair. And Banks converts and gets the three-point play. Hardage pulls up the dribble. Jim Matera comes in, and that will be a charge. Excellent job by Caleb Reeves to stand there and take that foul. That was sometimes difficult to do, especially because he didn't go up for the shot, but he just held his ground, held his water, was able to take the charge. Coaches love those hustle plays. So do fans. Absolutely. Those are great. It inspires your team, especially when you've been down this whole game. Keep playing harder. Oh, great look inside, and Ackerman just can't get it to go. Battle for the ball down low. Drillers have it for the moment, and it is put up, but it doesn't go. Sometimes it looks like they're just hoisting it up. Ackerman has it in the baseline, says, I'll take it. Woefully short. Here comes Birch. Birch will push the issue if he has to. Ziegler, pump fake, ball fake back to Birch. Oh, had a good look in three, decided not to take it. I think Coach Mike Martin's going to have a word with him say, Rohan. If you're wide open down there, I want you taking it. Great play by Ackerman there, but Rohan Birch left alone in the corner, didn't take the shot. 103 to go here. But I do like a kid. I want him to shoot, want him to be aggressive. But I like that Ziegler and Birch are working together, try to get the perfect shot and all that stuff and not try to force it that goes in there. So I like that kind of combination. Morrison will come out. Desai in. Ball finally comes in, but it's stolen by the drillers. Nice, and Banks comes up, and the first dunk of the 2017-2018 season on CurrentHighNetwork.com, and it is a blistering dunk by Roland Banks. And the bucket counts for the Wolfpack. They come right back and answer with Nick Edwards. So if you want to see that again, at KHSD Athletics, our Twitter handle, and that's where you're going to get it. And Banks can flat out get up. I mean, for his size, it's just so impressive. The junior throwing it down. I mean, he is lighting up our Twitter feed right now with his big blocks off the glass and then getting up for that dunk right there. Impressive. Missed free throw by Edwards, 25-17. Drillers trying to work their way back in this thing with under a minute to go here in this first half. Banks kicks it out in the corner. Bakakis has a good look. Looks good, is good. Costa, Bakakis with a three. Now another steal, and here comes Ackerman. Ackerman says, I got it, goes up and in. Looks a little banged up after that. Looks he's limping down, but another three gets pulled up by Desai, doesn't go, and we have a foul on the floor, and that's going to be on, I believe, Nick Edwards. Oh no, it's gonna be called on Roland Banks with the push. Ackerman banged up, and Coach Burt can't believe it. He said, what? My guy got called? Coach Burt didn't agree with the call whatsoever, but a 25-22 score right now. Banks with the dunk, Ackerman with the lay-in, and the free throw attempt by Edwards is no good, and so now Banks will come out, and everybody stands up to greet him. I said this early on, whoever starts hitting the three, that Bacacus three right there was huge, as now it's only a one possession game, 25-22, but what a start. Edwards misses the free throw, but Harold Hartage 
turns around and pulls a long shot. Goodness gracious. And that is the end of the first half. How about this? Drillers working their way back in here. Bakakis with a big three to make it 23-22. We'll be back with the third quarter here on KernHighNetwork.com. Every team trains hard. Every team prepares to win. But when U.S. Army soldiers take the field, it's best if the other guys don't bother showing up. See if you have what it takes at GoArmy.com slash team. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I'm a traditional banker. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. As a millennial, for me it's all about the mobile. And I'm somewhere in between. I still do everything online or through an ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. That's why we're the number one financial institution in all of Kern County. Take advantage of our low mortgage rates, including 60-day rate lock and no cost to you. Purchase or refinance your home today. Kern Schools. Together we have something special. This is where we're going to train the kids to actually get jobs in the industry. We're going to give them the basic tools that they need, also the skills that they need to understand where they fit into the industry. All the animated things, because we have everything that we need in the scenes. They are learning the principles of animation. Photoshop, they're learning how to animate in 2D and 3D. And when you swap to that shape, then you're just going to drag these over here. The storyboard aspect of creating basically the skeleton of the story and then just sort of directing people on my vision of what I want in the story. And it's also giving me the advantage of Mr. Pollard since he's worked at so many companies, being able to put it in my resume and be like, this is the art direction I've received. learning a lot about how mobile apps are made, uh, the programming and coding that goes into it, uh, along with the time and effort. Along with that is also uh, the entrepreneurship of the class, learning how to run our own business. We're also learning basic marketing skills, people skills, graphic design, and social media marketing so that they can freelance, they can work on their own, they can apply for a job, they can go to BC or Cal State or any other university who offers programs that are specific within the mobile app development concentration or business concentration. With my future and career, I do plan on being somewhat of an entrepreneur, owning my own business, sort of a clothing brand line. And so this will definitely help me out with possibly an app for my company and uh, the entrepreneur part, helping me be able to run my business smoothly uh, as I can make it go. what a game designer is, what they do, and how video games are made, and how to deconstruct them. We're also going to be teaching the hard skills, which includes learning the Unreal Engine. What the Unreal Engine is, is it's a game development tool that students will be able to use to make their very own video games. And this is something that actually industry professionals use every day to make uh, some of the top selling games. They're all the same size. You're all on the same plane. There's no undulating terrain or anything like that. Our instructor, he's really amazing. He encourages everybody. He's really fun and he makes learning fun. So they've got top of the line computers here and they're set up to excel. I would be surprised if other students their age coming out of high school would have anywhere near the level of expertise that these guys are going to have.
Third quarter action here. 25-22, low scoring game, fun, exciting game though. Stapp will come back in, start the second half for the Drillers. Banks, who has the heralded spot of having the first slam dunk of our season this season for Kernheim Network. Missed shot there for the Drillers, and here comes Ziegler. He stops, Stapp from behind. Coach Martin wanted the foul, said, man, got him from behind. Official said, no, it was clean. So Stapp does not pick up his third, 15 seconds into the third quarter. Good give and go, but a miss from one foot. Couldn't have been designed better, couldn't have been executed better, except for the two foot miss at the end of it. VP, I was waiting for your thunder dunk to really come on. That's your signature phrase when you get that dunk in there. Oh, how about this? Jim and Tara. I really like Jim and Tara's game. He brings a lot of different facets, good defense, a good three right there. Just good, solid player for the Wolfpack. The Cacus works the baseline, pulls it back out. Banks has it high over to Bacacus. There's the three. That looks good. Oh, back of the rim. Does it go? No, it bounces back over the glass. Had a great chance to catch up with an old, old buddy of mine, Nick Bacacus, father of Costa. It's been a long time. Got a chance to say hi to him. Thank goodness he looks like his mom. And <laughs> a lot of local legends saw Ron Loria, old West High oh. basketball coach down there. He's watching this game tonight. Coach so. Loria, one of my all-time favorites. What a great, great guy. He coached at West for many years. 28-22, six-point lead for the Wolfpack, just underway here in the third quarter. Has to be expected. A lot of free throws missed tonight. And some wild plays. Ziegler pulls the trigger from deep. No good. Stapp with the rebound. Stapp trying to get down court. And Ziegler picks up a cheap one. And Coach Mike Martin looks over at him and says, LaBelle, just don't get the third. Got two now. I'm not a fan of the phantom defense and then the swipe right there. I'd rather have him cut him off and force him to go different places as well. Ole defense. The red flag and the bull just goes by. Banks fouled underneath. So Vance, if you're Coach Mike Martin and you're at the half, what are you telling defensively? What are you telling them, or even offensively? What are you telling them as they approach the BHS in the second half? Well, they did a lot of things right in the first half. Late in the second quarter, they eased up from the game plan a little bit, started trying to pick up the drillers at half court, didn't have as much pressure on them, and Bacacus hits the big three. Yeah. They've been outworked on the boards. I think the big the big story here is going to be the rebounding battle here in the third quarter, but you know you're going up against the number three team in, yeah. the, in the section. Wasn't the worst showing, and they finished the half ahead, so. Good defense. I think the rebounding story is going to be the big story, and it's a turnover. Jim and Tara has the ball batted out. And Stapp to Bacacus. Bacacus comes up, lays it up, and it's in. So close to Bacacus. With a soft touch off the glass. Banks. Oh, goodness. Trevor Horn had his camera knocked off of the table. Hope it's not an injury there to the Sony. <laughs> high high uh, density, high whatever you want to call it camera. I think... Trevor's getting a security guard to set up in front of his camera and his equipment now. <laughs> T-Horn's got Kern High School District security covering his camera over there. Birch double teamed up high. Jim and Tara, there's a great, great press break. And sure enough, Hardage drains the three. Everything worked perfectly there. Bacacus to the nail, pulls it back out. The ball goes to Stapp, can't handle it. Stapp looks over, wants to know what happened there, Ziegler, and a loss of possession for the Wolfpack. It'll be Driller basketball. Not sure I'm a big fan right now of Ronnie Stapp's demeanor and body language, and they tried to feed him into the inside there, and the ball got swatted away, and maybe not too appreciative of the efforts of his teammates, but 
He's such a solid player and such an important part of this team. He pulls the trigger there, and that does not go, but rebounded. A big, strong rebound out there by Taj Wright, but that ball slips away. Jim and Tara now has it, and ball back over to Birch. Birch stands on the A of Wolfpack. Birch created for that Hartage three, even though Jim and Tara got the assist. Birch was able to break the press break right there. I like Birch's game. He's trying to set up good space and good passes for his teammates so they have good, high-quality high, high quality shots. Hartage left alone. No defense on him. He pulls it, doesn't go. Jim and Tara says, all right, I'll take my shot too. Big rebound by Taj Wright. He's off to the races. And looky here, Esquivel lays it in. Drillers down by four, 31-27. Full court press being put on stat, bats it away. So here comes the pressure, Mike Martin barking out his orders. Can't leave my inbounds man alone down there, fellas. So now they set it up from the side corner. Jim and Tara tosses it in. And that's a press break right there, Lavelle Ziegler. Dribbles out of what might be a trap. Stops, and it is going to be a blocking foul on the driller crowd. Yeah. Can't believe it. Taj Wright was standing there waiting for Ziegler. And that is a block foul when Coach Burt will I was looking for all, that. <laughs> all night long yeah. he'll say that's a charge. I was looking for the dotted line. Maybe he was inside that, but there is no dotted line. That's a, that's a tough one to swallow right there. Ziegler misses the first of two as the drillers will send Caleb Reeves in for Taj Wright. And Taj Wright got a little handshake from his coach and said that was nice. Reeves and Wright, two, one athlete replacing another freak, freakish athlete. I mean, that, it's just impressive the depth that DHS has. Edwards will come out. Ziegler gets, no, he doesn't. Misses that one, too. Here comes Stapp. Stapp down on the near side. Stapp crosses over. Stapp. Tries the one-handed pass in traffic with three guys on Reeves. And that is a turnover drillers. A foul is going to be called on Anthony Dominguez. So the drillers pick up their second foul here in the third quarter. But intense pressure getting put on by BHS. Ziegler takes the pass in. Interesting matchup, Banks and Birch right there, two good athletes. You have Banks, who's the super athlete, and you got Birch, who can break it down pretty crafty as a lefty. Jim and Tara is going to get harassed out there. And that is Stapp that gets his third. He picked up two very quick ones to start the second quarter. Didn't play in the first quarter. So 31-27, if the crowd came here tonight expecting a 100-point game, it's not going to happen. Good pass. Yeah, uh, tries to tries good, to good thread yeah, tries to yeah. thread too tight of a needle there. That didn't happen. So 31-27. Wolfpack still up. They've led the entire game. Have never trailed. And that's a good give and go. Nice inbounds play, and it works. Hardage says, look, they all don't have to be from 25 feet. I'll take the 10-footer, and he gets it. Hardage in rhythm, jump shot right there. Two points is two points. High percentage shot. Good job. Stapp in traffic. Feeds it back out to Dominguez. Really nice pass. Hustle work down there by Esquivel. Esquivel has it down low, has it stripped away. And the foul is going to be called on... Gabriel Esquivel, it'll be Wolfpack basketball, so I'll tell you what, Ziegler went in to steal it, and not only did he steal the ball, the foul gets called on Esquivel, and now Ziegler's going against Stapp and Esquivel. He's in trouble. He better get it over quickly. Ooh, and he does, just at the eighth second. So Esquivel on Stapp, he likes that matchup, throws the ball away, stolen by Dominguez. Here comes Stapp, and he gets fouled by Ziegler, so what a matchup yeah. between Stapp and Ziegler right now. A lot of energy, a lot of emotion. Uh, Stapp's got to be careful, though. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the, like you said, the Olay defense and then reaching in there, especially when you have three fouls. And, you know, with, there's still three minutes left to go in the third quarter. I think they're going to need Stapp going into the fourth quarter. You hope that he doesn't have foul trouble. Banks. 
for a quick second. For a quick second, he had Reeves, but he couldn't commit to him. And that ball was batted away again. Trevor Horn with the save. It's either him or his camera with the save right there. So <laughs> trying, to, trying to look at that. 254 remains here in this third quarter. A wide open look for Dominguez and doesn't get it to go. And there's some contact below the hole down there. Caleb Reeves is getting mixed up with Jim and Tara, and that's going to be a foul. I think that staff right there that went over the top. Well, the foul was called on Reeves. He was going at it with Jim and Tara. Wow. And Stapp having a quick word with Coach Burt. An auspicious beginning for the senior forward. And... Mark Heffernan to the rack, yelling that out loud. <laughs> Loving it. The half. Bring, brings the energy, the half. 33-27. And Dominguez will come out. Ackerman will come in. Bakakis back in. Oh, quick little pass down low. Everybody caught sleeping. And Harold Hardich gets another two. Great pass. Ackerman thought about it, goes baseline, and he's hammered on the baseline. No call right in front of the official. And that's going to be what would have been a travel. Now Ackerman has it. Ackerman thinks about it. Ackerman goes up for the dunk, doesn't get it, but he gets fouled. So Samuel Ackerman went up to rock the rim, but he got fouled on the way. And I think a lot of that was anger and angst because he took an elbow to the face a minute earlier, and now Ziegler, the captain, wants to come over and talk to the officials. So 33-27, things are getting a bit feisty in here. A little soccer update for you, fans. Goal! Golden Valley wins 3-1 to one tonight. They have a pretty good team this year, so I think it's very excited. What a wonderful event that we're able to broadcast in Spanish. As you talked about earlier, possibly could be the first high school game ever broadcast in Spanish, and I think that tells wonder about the open-mindedness our district has about supporting all students. So Sam Ackerman, the sophomore with the super hops, makes one of two. Bakakis roughing up Birch. But oh, Ziegler stops and takes the 15-footer, knocks it down, 33-28. Bakakis has it in the corner. Back over here to Banks. Banks says, I'll take a three. Doesn't get it to go, but Kakis with the offensive board. Working hard, pump fakes, goes up, has the ball batted away. But it's still in Costa's hands. Here's another nice three. That ball's deflected and still goes. Escaval has the ball tipped and it still drops. And 35 to... I think it's 31. Should be 21. 35, 21. 31. 30, sorry. Yeah. 35, 31 should be the score. And the BHS crowd most certainly wanting to make sure that that score goes up. So a timeout on the floor taken by Mike Martin. And they're saying that the official score is 37-31. I can tell you this, it was 35 for about a minute and a half. And now all of a sudden they want it to be 37. It wasn't as if it just happened a moment ago, but there doesn't seem to be any objection from anyone wearing all blue. So 37-31, things starting to get rolling here. Full court press. Birch in trouble, bailed out by Hardage who comes to the top of the key. Jim and Tara puts it up and in, so Sean Jim and Tara somehow gets it to go again, and Coach Burt wants to put Taj right back in there. As Banks comes in and lays it up, doesn't get it to go, and now two on one, and Ziegler comes in and he puts it up and in, so Lavelle Ziegler starts to take off. And here's a deflected pass. It'll remain BHS ball as we see Taj Wright Trying to figure out the score that's going on there. Now it's 
both both coaches are trying to figure out. Both books are trying to figure it out. Well, Ridgeview having a few growing pains tonight here to start off the season with game ops. Banks puts the ball in Taj's hands, and Wright goes up. Again, quick clarification for anybody that may be wondering why sometimes we just go with first names only. Been calling these young men and women's games for a long time, and a lot of times just the first name just rolls off the tongue. We've known Taj for a while here. Yeah. <laughs> and so Wright cannot get the first one to go, so now it looks like it's 39-30. You knew Taj when he made that one-handed crazy catch against Garces last year when we first started in infancy. So These scores have changed now three times since these timeouts started. It was 35-31, then it was 37-31, now it's 39-30, eh? So all three books now discussing it, a stoppage of play. You can't really keep going if you don't have the score right. The lead official standing over the table. We will take a 30-second timeout, and we'll be back in just a second. All right, so after much discussion that still isn't completely over, head coach Mike Martin talking to the official, it looks like we have come to a consensus of 39-31, and after that free throw made right now by Taj Wright, 31, sorry, 39-32. Rohan Birch, stop, pulls up the hash, hands it over to Lavelle Ziegler, one-on-one. -on -one. Man-to-man -man defense and another timeout taken by the officials and the 35 second shot clock was never reset. I think you're right with it. Growing pains on on game one. So another stoppage of play. Coach Burt patiently observing. And now they want to count down the shot clock to 20. All right. Ziegler going to work on Banks. Ball comes down low to Jim and Terry. He backs in, throws it out to Ziegler. Ziegler now getting worked over by Taj Wright. Ziegler pulls. Does it go? It does not, and it is a rebound. Oh, and they're gonna say it was a push off by Roland Banks. So now we have a score of 39-33, a phantom point that all of a sudden. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's 32. <laughs> Thirty-nine, thirty-two, and the first one goes down for Jamal Chase. Twenty-nine seconds remains here in the third quarter. Low-scoring affair, total of seventy points, seventy-one now with Chase making that one. It should be 41-32. They're calling it 41-31. Ackerman to Bacacus in the corner. Bacacus throws one back over to the corner 
And now there's 11 seconds, 10 seconds, and Banks comes in and he'll be fouled with six seconds left in the third quarter. So now it's back to 41-31. And I'm getting dizzy. At the line, Roland Banks drops in another. He's had a nice game tonight. And he'll come out for a second. Now it's 41-32. The long ball goes up at the end, and that is it. So without the game clock and the buzzer and the score not being 100% correct, we think right now it's 41-32, but we will check. We know that we're at the end of the third quarter, and we'll be back right after this on KernHighNetwork.com. All right. Are they Coach, calling it 43-33 now? And Coach Burt is kind of throwing his hands up in exhaustion here. His book, he's got his guy keeping score. On a side note, we have the luxury of having one of our good friends from the Bakersfield, California, Trevor Horn, keeping track and he believes he has a score. There's a book from the Ridgeview book side of the, from their bench, and we have one at the scores table. And we're about to start the fourth quarter with what we believe to be as the final score, 43-33. 43-33, 10 point lead for the Wolfpack. Here we go, fourth quarter action. Rohan Birch. Ackerman comes up, tries to stop him. Oh, floats a pass over to Ziegler. Ziegler going to work on Bakakis. Ziegler comes in and Ziegler slipped. But I believe this is going to be a foul on Bakakis. And it is. So Costa called for the foul and Ziegler will go to the line. Floats in the first one. Lavelle Ziegler. He's had a nice game in the second half as he's tried to take control of the game. He's become the primary ball handler for Ridgeview. Misses that. Ackerman ends up with the fortuitous bounce. Banks over to Stapp. Stapp has a wide open three. Can't get it to go. Will he get his old rebound? He will. Goes hard to the bucket now. Puts it up. And will it count? It does. Ronnie Stapp. The foul is going to be on Ziegler. That's his fourth. But I think they're going to call it on the floor and make it a bonus shot. It is. Oh, no. Okay. Go, they went ahead and gave him two. I thought at first they were saying it was. Oh, no, they are because the bucket did not count. So they're giving him a bonus. They called it on the floor, not in the air. 
So Stapp has his first point of the night with 7.28 to go in the fourth quarter. And he gets the second to go there. 44-34, still a 10-point deficit for these drillers to work through. Ziegler has the ball batted away by Stapp. Now Jim and Tara is in trouble, but he gets across half court. He's going to go straight to the hole. They don't stop him. Ball deflected. Bacacus floats this out to Ackerman. Ackerman goes up and, oh, strong foul underneath the hole. Looks like they called intentional foul right there. So they will call the intentional foul on Abneet Desai. So Abneet Desai called for the intentional foul. And Mike Martin, as good of a coach as there is and as smart of a coach as there is, probably just said, hey, you know, just go in and foul him hard, but not that. And Ackerman misses. Misses them both. So the drillers will have the ball out. Ackerman looking for that dunk. Ball comes back out to Bakakis. Banks has it. Nine point lead for the Wolfpack. Bakakis takes a look back over to Banks. Banks now to Ackerman. Ackerman down into Stapp. Stapp has it. Stapp puts it on the floor. Pump fakes comes up and we'll go to the line. Such a mismatch nightmare because he's so long, so lengthy. He's just tough to defend because you can't really body him up because he's, he's, you know, thin, but he's functional strength to look at that. So good solid game for Stapp. Edwards call for the foul. Stapp to the line again and he's three for three third point and Ackerman will come out and back into the ball game Gabriel Esquivel Stapp drops another one in so there's four points for Ron Stapp all here in this fourth quarter Jim and Tara ball stolen and what was going to be a dunk was rolling banks and that'll be a foul on Sean Jim and Tara so Jim and Tara picks up his third, so they throw it right into the hand of the highest flyer in the gym. And Banks was going to make them pay for it, but they foul him on the ground. Trying to shoot, though. Yeah, I may have to argue with you. I see Justin McCall sitting right over there, the highest flyer in the gym. Straight ahead, half court, sitting in front row, watching this game, supporting his old teammates. Well, I would certainly hope that you knew I'm in, in action <laughs> yeah, yeah. tonight. In action no, VP, tonight. No, VP, VP's eyes. Huh? Yeah. I heard in your day, you can get up there. There's actually a couple of high flyers sitting in the stands tonight. Yeah. As we see Roland Banks drop him two in. So all of a sudden, six-point ball game here for the Drillers to try to fight through. Oh, and they've got it to a four-point game, 44-40. Should be five-point, but <laughs> oh, man. this is just Wolfpack. Ziegler goes up, and he'll be fouled early in the effort. And that foul is going to be called on Roland Banks. And and that's Banks' fifth foul. And now they're shooting the free throw while the officials over here waiting for a substitution to be brought in for the fifth player. So the official was over here waiting for a substitute to come in. The other officials gave the ball to Ziegler and said, go ahead and shoot. The officials like, whoa, 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 whoa. We're trying to get a fifth player in here. So the free throw does not count. Does not count. So Banks fouls out with his last foul, and they bring in Anthony Dominguez. So a bit of discombobulation here for a few seconds. <laughs> they gave him the free throw to shoot it, and now Ziegler misses, and the Wolfpack fans not happy about the outcome of that. And here comes Escabel down to Costa, Costa Bacacus, and a great pass down low, but good defense by the Wolfpack, and that's gonna be on Ziegler, we think. 
So nice ball movement, but as good of defense by the Wolfpack until that call, Lavelle Ziegler, and I have him for five. I have him for five, and the official score has him at five, and BHS has him at five. So that should be his fifth foul. But the Ridgeview bookkeeper has it at four, and that is five for Lavelle Ziegler. I guess the score is 45-40 now. <laughs> Three out of four books, including mine, had him at five, so. And now Coach Burt says, hey, they just got a point added on. So Dominguez now at the line, 45-40, and Dominguez misses the first. So it's the early stages of the season for everybody, it is. for everybody. And, it, and it's frustrating on both sides because you have two top caliber teams that are out here, and they have to deal with you know, book issues and things like that that go on there. So tough calls that are being made, frustrating for both teams. Full timeout, and we're going to take it as well. 44-40 to 40 here on KernHighNetwork.com. Timeout called by head coach Mike Martin. You just want to kind of get his guys composed here with so much of a disjointed evening with the scoreboard and the clock and the official book and the 35 and the 30 second shot clock, 35 second shot clock for the boys. And a lot of times that could just wear on the player's mental state. Yeah. And now Anthony Dominguez shoots the second, misses both of them. And it's going to be rebounded, and it's going to be possession arrow. Whose will it be? The Drillers. Or the Wolfpack. <laughs> oh, it's going to be the Wolfpack. First they yell blue. And now it's 44-41 off of two missed free throws. Here comes Birch. Six oh two to go here in this fourth quarter. Ball goes up. It is no good, but it's an offensive rebound out there by Nick Edwards. Ball batted away. It'll be Ridgeview ball on their own baseline. Good Birch, right hand, oh, man. that ball was halfway down the cylinder and it came back out. Now Stapp wants to take it himself. A one-hander that is almost stolen. Bacacus has it in the corner. Pulls, comes up a bit short, grabs his own rebound, comes up strong. Close to Bacacus. Ball stolen by Dominguez and thrown off the ankles of Sean Gimentara. So the driller crowd still wanting their points put up on the board. Should be 44-43. And 
now it should be 44, 45. And the driller crowd starting to come alive here. And step on the baseline, Harold Hartage did. And it should be, well, look, I'm just going off yeah. 41 plus 4. 41 plus 4 is 45. And there is a crowd around the scorer's bench, around the official table. And 44-44, Stapp for a second thought about it. Escobar, he drops his in. Here come the drillers. Long three pull from the corner doesn't go for the Wolfpack. It was taken by Desai. Bakakis comes up, has the ball deflected. He will shoot two. And the driller faithful up and at him right now. 47-44, I think. Yeah, I think I have 48-44, but. Nick Edwards picks up a foul. And now at the line will be Costa Bacacus and the officials. A technical foul called on Nick Edwards as well. Uh-oh. So. Frankly, it's, it's not all that easy calling a game like this. Yeah. Because part of my gig is to make sure you know the score. Small part of the gig. <laughs> Julian, your thoughts? This is a tough game, Vans, uh, but you're doing a great job. Oh, hey, <laughs> I, I'm glad I turned your mic on. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> so, technical foul is, we thought, called. Now, no. The officials have everybody back in the slots for the free throw. Costa Bacacus. At the line, he'll shoot two. The sophomore drops the first one in. I'm hesitant to put any points on there because I want to wait till after. Bacacus comes up a hair short, 48-44, rebound. Ridgeview, four point lead for the Drillers. Been a big fourth quarter for them. Birch. Over to Hardage. Listen to the driller crowd. Hardage can't get inside. And Jim and Tara will go to the line. That foul is going to be on Ackerman, his second. And both teams in a double bonus now. And Jim and Tara's game is so, uh, it's um, hard to describe, a little yeah. elusive, a little sneaky. Crafty, I there really like that, that he gets on there. He just is a, a solid player for him. Kind of does it all a little bit, can hit the three. He's got to hit free throws in clutch situations. Missed the first, makes the second. 48-45, three-point lead for the Drillers. They trailed the entire game till about two minutes ago. Stapp has it. Taj Wright throws it over to Ackerman. Ackerman, they're going to say he walked. He shuffled his feet. Coach Burt wanted the ball to get reversed back around anyway, so not happy there. Technical foul. A technical foul called on the bench of BHS. 
So at the line, Harold Hartage. Don't know if it was on the coach or just on the bench in general. Yeah, I, I didn't hear or see him say anyone yeah. specific, a number, or even, an, you know, any indication of who it was. Now Coach Burt wants an explanation as Hardage misses his second, 48-46. Well, if this is any indication to the drama that will unfold wow. over this winter in basketball. As Hardage right in front of McCall. And a really nice pass from Birch to Jamal Chase, and Chase will shoot too. That foul is going to be on Taj Wright, his third. 48 46, drillers up by two. Chase is raw. I think he's got a lot of a lot of talent that he could utilize right there, but let's see how he does in these clutch situations in the free throws. He's a junior. Stands at 6'2. Just a little long, and it is grabbed underneath by Wright. Wright off to Stapp. Stapp, full throttle down the middle of the floor. Slips, catches his feet, has the ball rejected, and here comes Birch. Birch comes in hard, has the ball stripped, no foul. Stapp has Bacacus in the backcourt. Ball swatted away by Chase. Another strip, and they're going to say it's a foul on... Anthony Dominguez, so at KHST Athletics. Chase with a big block. Ackerman called for the foul. Timeout taken, a full timeout taken by Mike Martin. 48-46 with 3.26 to go here in the fourth quarter. We'll take a quick break on KernineNetwork.com. Man, I'm getting, I'm getting beat up by some Highland High School players. They love this game, though, but here we go. 48-46. Ridgeview has a chance to get back in this thing and tie it up. Hardage makes the first of two. He's had a nice evening tonight, too. Tony's Pizza Player of the Game. Still way undecided. Big rebound on the miss. Taj right. Here come the driller. Stapp to the corner. Bacacus has it. He throws it cross court. Oh, well, Anthony Dominguez had a look, decided to stop and pull up, doesn't get it to go, but he battles for it. No, it's going to be Ridgeview. They trail by one, 48-47. Hardage. Stapp goes for the steal, can't get it. Birch has it five on four. Now they go Hardage in the corner. He dribbles. He's in trouble, though. One-hander out to Birch. 
Birch trying to go to work, stops at the elbow, puts it up. Does it go? It does not. Another big, big rebound by Taj Wright. Here comes Taj Wright, has Bukakis on his left. Foul on the fast break. Foul is going to be on Rohan Birch, his second. And not a bad foul, actually. You've got Taj Wright on the fast break. Yeah, Bukakis, too, yeah, yeah. Bukakis on the left, Dominguez on the right. So went for the foul. 48-47. 246 remaining here in the fourth quarter at the line. Taj Wright. And he misses. Second. Misses the second. Rebound. Wolfpack. Hardage going up against Bacacus. Tight man to man by the drillers. They initiate it up high with Birch. Back over to Hardage. He stops, pulls up the 12 footer, doesn't get it to go. But a big rebound by James, and he puts it back up, doesn't go. So Jamal Chase with the big offensive rebound, but now the foul is going to be down on the ground, called on Sean Gimentera, his fourth. Oh, sorry, his fifth. Sorry, his fifth. Jim and Tara has five. He had a nice game tonight. Did a lot of a lot of solid things to keep the Wolf Pack in this game. Back at the line again. Taj Wright. Another shot at two. Wolf Pack crowd making some noise. Another miss by Taj. We're broken records every year with this. Making those free throws so clutch and oh, key. Yeah. That one goes. 49-47. And a look. Does it go? Oh, back in and out. Doesn't go. A battle for the basketball. Rebound, Drillers. So, this size three does not go. Stapp wants the ball up high. Stapp pulls for three. Does not draw iron. And that's Ridgeview's ball. Two-point game, 49-47. 2-0-1 to go. 2-0-1 to go in the fourth. Birch pulls it up. And a dangerous one-hander thrown up by Desai. Pulls it back, and it'll be Birch. It tries to control the offense, gives it to Hardage. Pass down low. Block rejected by Ackerman, but Taj Wright can't pull it in. And 49-47. It's like 136 left in the game clock. And we have a timeout taken. We'll stay here. 49-47. Tomorrow night, the Kern High All-Stars Volleyball, an annual superstar show. One of my favorite nights. We get these seniors from all around the valley yeah. coming into play at Centennial High School. And just some of the names, just looking at the rosters, it's going to be a fun, fun night. Can't wait yeah, to call absolutely. it. absolutely. It's going to be a – we have Titan Tom Myers. He's going to be on the public address tomorrow. He's been with us for volleyball and for football this year. Uh, did, does a great job, understands the game really well, and talked with him last night. He's excited about tomorrow night. It should make for a very, very good evening. Right now – 49-47 with 136 to go and we may hit the 100 mark 
96 total points scored. Didn't think we'd get that high. Birch now trying to go to work on Bacacus. Crosses him up for a second. Birch comes in. Nice pass down low, and it is converted. Jamal Chase has another big bucket, and we're tied up at 49. Stapp brings it right down the middle. 117 and counting. Pump fake to Stapp, and it does not go, and it is rebounded down low. Taj Wright put it up, no good. We're tied at 49 with one minute to go. Hernandez just hasn't been able to find the bucket at all tonight. Big attempt by Hartridge, didn't get it to go. Now Taj Wright puts it in the hands of Anthony Dominguez. Will we see a timeout called? No, we won't. 45 seconds and ticking. Stapp wants a pick high, tries to jam it in there, a one-handed pass. They reset the clock. That is a horrible pass. Yeah. Just have to say. <laughs> I like the young man, but a one-handed pass in traffic to start the offense and a full timeout taken by Coach Burt. We'll be back right out of this on currenthighnetwork.com. Don't go anywhere. All right, everybody, Vance Palm alongside Kyle Wiley. Julian Wilson on camera. Julian doing a great job tonight, thank you. Fast pace, horse race. And now all of a sudden we are at 40 seconds. 40 seconds remaining here in the fourth quarter. We are tied at 49. Every time we've done a drillers basketball game, it comes down to the wire. Remember that Liberty game last year in the Wolfpack? Stapp okay. backs over the half court line for a back court call. Wow. Two mental mistakes that he's had in the last few seconds. Oh my gosh. He backed up four feet, five feet, and his heels went four inches over the half court line. And Ridgeview has the basketball tied up at 49. 35 seconds and counting. Hartridge going to work on Bacacus. High pick to the left side, tries to split it and thread it, can't get it, ball's on the ground, who wants it? And it's gonna end up in Taj Wright's hands. Coach Burt wants a timeout, Bacacus has it, Bacacus throws it out, they pull it back out. And craziness everywhere, Stapp goes in, throws a beautiful pass to Wright. Doesn't make the two-footer. Bacacus throws it, and it is caught over there by Dominguez. Dominguez drops the three in. At the buzzer. At the buzzer. Anthony Dominguez drops it in at the buzzer to win it. 52-49. Are you kidding me? And Coach Martin... Wants to have a word with the officials. But the officials are clearing the court. A 52 to 49. And no handshakes. Except for Rohan Birch. Rohan Birch is coming out to shake everybody's hand. Give Shane Jones a big hug. Oh, and Coach Martin doesn't like that. Rohan Birch was the one player to come shake hands, and Mike Martin didn't like it and sent him out and off. Goodness. Goodness. We're going to take a quick break. Not a long one. I mean a quick one, Kyle. We need to talk about Tony's Pizza Player of the Game and make sense of all this. Back in a moment.
Welcome back, everybody. Vance Palm, Kyle Wiley, Julian Wilson. Julian, get your headsets on. Well, <laughs> this has been one of the crazier nights with game operations and, you know, when you go from football to basketball and you go from fall to winter sports, you got to get the machine rolling again. And uh, that was one crazy, crazy night with no main clock working on the scoreboard. We have discrepancies with a lot of different things, but what we have not had any discrepancies all with whatsoever is our Tony's Pizza Player of the Game. But before we get there, Julian Wilson, you've seen a lot of stuff. What about tonight? I tell you what, this was a tough game all the way around. It just goes to show how very important it is to have everything in working order. These guys were going back and forth. It was almost a tennis match. If you blinked, you missed the game Yeah. because that's how fast they were moving. So, Julian, thank you for your expert camera work tonight. That's one thing that was absolutely working. Kyle, before we give away the name of our Tony's Pizza player of the game because he's over there talking to Trevor Horn right now, uh, your thought on this evening in general? I, I mean, crazy, crazy start, crazy, crazy game. It, like, as you talked about, Vance, it's frustrating on both sides of the ball. You're trying to figure out what the correct score is. You're trying to figure out, you know, things that are happening. But I'll tell you this is BHS had all the hype being the number three team in the Valley, and Ridgeview came to play tonight. Rohan Birch had a really nice game for the Wolfpack, and Jim and Tao had another – great game for the Wolfpack but at the end of the day I mean we saw some super athletic individuals tonight we had our Tony's Pizza dunks that were going on with Banks I man he came out of nowhere we, we didn't even see him last year I think he was hurt last year but Banks had a solid game so well we went to break for a minute to talk about the Tony's Pizza player of the game we threw around a couple of different names here's some names we threw around Roland Banks fouled out didn't play a lot of the fourth quarter but had our first dunk of the season and three window wipers man he just swatted some away great stuff there Ackerman had a nice game Costa uh, uh, Bacacus had a nice game but on a game like tonight on a night like tonight Kyle Wiley Great, great decision. How do you not just go ahead and wipe everything out and give it to the game-winning buzzer beater? You said it about 30 seconds before. <laughs> yeah. He hasn't hit a shot all night. Bam! <laughs> Anthony Dominguez, our Tony's Pizza player of the game. Julian, you like the call? I agree, 100%. Kyle made the call. I'm going to agree with it. Anthony Dominguez, on a night like tonight, if you have the last shot and it wins the game, you get the Tony's Pizza player of the game. All right, we're going to wrap this thing up tomorrow night. We're going to be at Centennial High School for the uh, Kern High School District's All-Star Senior Volleyball uh, Annual Extravaganza. Four teams. We're going to get after it. And then, of course, we have the hard-hitting contest. Who can hit a spike at the hardest? So it's going to be a blast. Look forward to all of it. On behalf of everybody at the high school district, all of our sponsors, for Julian, for Kyle, for myself, Vance Palm, pleasure to have you with us tonight. It was crazy, it was wild, and it finished on a three-pointer by Anthony Dominguez. 52-49, Drillers win. Good night. God bless.